afternoon guys, what's going on? So we are here again with uh, Braden from Fleece Performance. Uh, today you are gonna learn anything and everything about uh, a lot of the turbos that are offered here and the processes, and we're just gonna run you guys through and, and sit down with, you know, learn something today. Cool. Uh, Greg, this is where, uh, you know, we start the turbocharger process. Um, this is it's kind of set up in a, in a U-shaped cell. I mean, when we first started, we, you know, we'd tear each individual turbo down and it would get uh, turned into a cheetah, you know, we'd carry that one turbo all the way through the process. Typically there'll be a skid of cores that we either have purchased um, or customer units that are coming back in, and those get broken down um, here on the table. It's kind of a messy job. Torn apart, cleaned, or gone through a, a high temperature, high pressure wash, dried, and then they go into a uh, steel abrader. And this is a steel shot blast machine, um, which, it's a real fine media, but uh, it's like a sandblaster, but uh, it does a much better job. So everything gets, you know, once it's, I should back up, it gets qualified when we first tear it down. So we want to make sure that it's a good part before we mm -hmm. invest all the time in washing it, cleaning it, shot blasting it. So right. they get qualified over there. If they're good parts, they make it through the rest of the process. But then over here, are all the uh, all the parts that they've probably ran in the last week, um, and these are all getting ready to go into the CNC machine shop. Uh, we've got two lathes dedicated to creating cheetahs. Um, these are uh, covers that have been sandblasted and they're labeled based on what our turbo builders know we need from a build schedule. Um, we keep a pretty uh, good track of orders from WDs, orders from our website, and we're plotting trends and seeing what's selling so when you when you say cheetah for those who don't know yeah. uh, the brief explanation of what a, a fleece cheetah is, yeah. explain that a little bit. From cheater <laughs> back in the day because you know work stock truck pulling um, we had work we had regular trucks you know and Chase had a Dodge I had a Duramax and the Duramax uh, turbo had shared some common parts with uh, um, some of the other Garrett turbos from a, a series up like a GT40 um, so. I started grabbing parts out of their uh, parts bin and creating cheetahs, and now we have our own turbines and compressor wheels made and stuff, and be, you know, use better bearings and all that. But um, yeah, it was a play on words for a cheater because we would go into a stock appearing class with a turbo capable of making another 150 horsepower. So basically, these are modified stock chargers. Yes. Yep. You know, you know, geared towards more performance, but still your basically bolts on like stock looks like stock right. can still perform like stock you're going to give up a little bit you know with a 68 it's not your you know bolt on mm -hmm. turbo for just a guy with stock fuel but the 63 definitely is and it can swing from you know a 400 horsepower tow rig to a 730 horsepower 25 legal work stock puller these are all uh duramax turbine housings um those are uh, ihi uh, lb7 turbos and then uh, loi through well, LMM, and now we have a new LML turbo out. I was going to say, so as far as Cummins and uh, Duramax, yep. Cheetahs are available pretty much through power almost, um, oh, Power Stroke 2 as yes, well. six liters. I'm pretty much available through almost all of the years. We do, we cover them Generations all. now. Uh, every, every specific truck has its own yep. specific Cheetah based off of the stock charger that came on that truck. Yep, and a lot of people don't know, but we go all the way back to 12 valve, so... On uh, the, on the Dodges, so mm -hmm. um, we can make you, uh, you know, a hot work stock turbo, or um, you know, something custom, or just typically our box stock stuff is our best offering for that particular turbo. I mean, we've got some two five truck pullers around here running, you know, off the shelf, out of the brown box, just like we ship to anyone. Um, trucks making eight hundred horsepower on mm -hmm. sixty three Dodge Cheetahs. Cheetahs. After they. Uh, they're cleaned up and qualified and ready to go into the machine shop. Those parts get staged here, um, and they've got some, uh, you know, little magnetic signs designating um, and what priority that these things need to get machined. But uh, you can see there's a lot of LMLs down there on the bottom. But we just released the LML Cheetah. Um, we usually, you know, as soon as a new truck launched, we would create a turbo for it. But the the airflow and boost control and the LML. ECM is just odd. It doesn't exactly listen to what you want um, it to do. It used to be we could set a boost target and say I want to make 48 pounds or I want to make you know, 40 pounds, save your head gaskets, something safe. It worked 
pretty well. Well, the tables that are available in tuning and even the tables that aren't available in tuning um, that we've dug up just really don't, uh, weren't doing a good job and most people didn't have access to the stuff. So we've really dug in and tried to figure out a way to make the tuning work well and um, we designed a turbo that Chase pretty much whipped up over the, yeah, three or four weeks, put it on the truck, let him loose with the laptop, which was scary. And uh, <laughs> he's actually picked up EFI real well um, over the dyno over the last year or so. And so he tuned in exactly what uh, he wanted and he's got a nice, reliable 45, 50 pounds. Uh, turbo's working real well. But um, so that's why we're kind of late to the market on the, the LML VNT. But we wanted to make sure that we had something that everyone could get similar results on. Um, and we were happy with. So that's the LML turbine, ha turbine housing. Um, and like I said, it just launched and uh, on a pre-order basis. And uh, I think they're actually live on the website now. And uh, we're getting orders for them. So Getting ready to go out. Yeah. Got, awesome. Uh, ramped up. I think we had like 50 cores come in. And uh, it's going. So These will uh, go into the machine shop and then come back out and then get painted. Let's take you into the machine shop and I'll show you some, uh, some of the technology and what we're doing. Um, you can see if you come in here, Greg, this has been machined. So we machine that to accept a larger compressor wheel. Yep. So that's the 63 millimeter compressor wheel that we'll be putting into that bore. The first cheetahs that were made, I did this on a South Bend lathe, like 1930s, just <laughs> after you know World War One or whatever, uh, leather belt lathe and. They're not CNC. You don't have the ability to make curves and radiuses. So to do that, you've got to use the compound and you've got to cut steps in it and use a file and then spray it with bluing or dicum. And it's a, about an hour long process mm -hmm. after I'd gotten the hang of it. I made right. like 20 of them that way. So <laughs> when we got our first lathe, it was a big purchase. So we actually framed the purchase. Framed the purchase? <laughs> yeah. So. It was, uh, it was a nice moment. Uh, it was back in like 2008, still out at Bull Barn, the original shop, uh, about 3,000 square feet out there. So this is where they all get turned. So they, the compressor covers, all the aluminum parts get turned in this lathe to keep the chips separate. So this is the second lathe where we do all of our cast iron stuff. Um, like I said, it's, you keep, uh, it's, it's a dirty process and it's a little bit bigger lathe, so cutting cast iron, it, uh, it has a little more capacity. But, um, so we cut the turbine housing to accept a bigger turbine. Um, the turbine is obviously the hot side where the exhaust comes into the, you know, the turbocharger. We upgrade the turbine and the compressor wheel and the bearings in the Cheetah. So it's not just like a comp wheel and cover upgrade. Um, if you can't get more exhaust out of the engine um, or you don't have a bigger turbine wheel to actually create enough turbine horsepower to drive a bigger compressor wheel, you're not gaining anything. It'll actually make the turbo um, less responsive, it's going to be harder to drive, it's going to be closer to surge all the time because you're trying to drive a big compressor with a turbine that can't make any horsepower to drive it. Mm -hmm. There's, you know, When I say turbine horsepower, that's the ability of that turbine to spin that comp wheel. You put a big comp wheel on top of a factory turbine, it doesn't do well. So we machine out this housing to accept a bigger turbine, uh, pretty much as big as we can put in there, and then uh, and that's, that's true with all the Cheetahs. We don't really have any of them that are just a comp wheel upgrade. They're all a matched turbine and comp right. wheel. So it's a, complete, it's a complete package, yes. like, like, like you're saying. It's not just a wheel and cover, it's a completely redesigned. It looks like a stock charger, but yes. through and through has been four throttle. Front side, back side. Everything in between. 360 degree thrust bearings, upgraded bearings. Yep. We're making sure that they live. So as these uh, the parts get done in the machine shop, they come out here to the turbo build area. Um, actually, they get painted first, but then once they're painted, they come over here in what we call turbo land. Every, <laughs> everything becomes a land. In everything place. becomes a land. There's pump land. We are now turbo entering land. official turbo land. Geek land, where I spend my time. <laughs> Truck land, but <clears throat> so in turbo land, we've got all of our input materials. This is all done now. Ready to be built. They're good parts. They've been qualified from the very beginning <clears throat> to be good parts. Sent through the machine shop, um, machine painted, ready to go. So those are all 351 VEs. I mean, there's 150 turbos there. Um, that's a really hot seller, 2007 to, well, 
present mm -hmm. Dodge Ram trucks. Um, there's a completed cart. And this shows a little bit of the detail of uh, after balance. They've got a serial number that you're just putting on each cart um, of the comp wheel, turbo ser serial number, and the balance numbers. Um, and then uh, the date. Then that gets entered and put in a system. So we're tracking all these metrics on every turbo. On every single charger. Yep. Wow. I'll show you the turbo balancer here. I don't have the, the balancer up and running for a job right now, but uh, I've loaded up a compressor wheel in here so you can see how it works. Um, this machine is can sense the vibration or Im imbalance of the wheel. It turns it with that rubber belt on an arbor. But uh, as you see that spin, normally we'll have a uh, paint mark and this laser comes over here and that figures out our, our timing or the speed of rotation of that compared to the speed of rotation of the wheel so that it knows that it's um, staying in time because it when it finishes, you rotate it around and it tells you exactly where it's out of balance. Okay. And then when we balance, we balance to a spec that is tighter than what Holset recommends for rebuilding that series of turbo. But we know that we're going to push them, customers are going to push them. So if we're at a better balance, right, better chance, we have of... a little bit better margin of safety for overspeed. Um, that's a VE 351VE. This is a 351CW. Um, this was ready to go in a box. It's this sitting is... over here on the. Uh, pallet racking because um, they once they build they push over there and then Jordan's gonna package the stuff up but well, this is the completed this ready to roll right onto your truck roll. unit wastegate's been set uh, work with turbo smart good guys um, on a you know custom actuator to fit our application put uh, new wastegate hose everything you know it's a brand new charger pretty much when we're done with it but you know you've got a uh, our comp wheel upgraded bearings in the middle New car, uh, new turbine, which now you can see much easier than mm -hmm. where it's machined yep. out and how much bigger it is. Yep, yep. And I mean, we're right up there against the uh, the uh, wastegate. That's as big as we can go with that turbine. But yep. I mean, this turbo in the box, we have a two five sled puller on a sixty three wheel, making eight hundred horsepower, and he is cleaning house. Which now that's not the uh, <laughs> that's a little out of the recommended. Uh, just a little. Just a, just a little? Just a little. So wh what would you say, as far as application goes, is, you know, anything from a stock truck mm -hmm. that could bolt right onto up to, as you long know... As the wastegate's not modified, we're good to 730 to 750. Um, if you start messing with our wastegate... Yes. Yep. Uh, that's that's rear wheel horsepower. Yep. If you start messing with the wastegate settings and getting it up in that 50, 55 pound range, play okay. with fire. Okay, okay, okay. So this is this is this is good from anything from stock, you know, mid seven hundred horse, you know, with with every bit of stock characteristics. It catches a lot of people. I mean, like we talked about, you know, yesterday at lunch. There's a difference between a peaky eight hundred horsepower, maybe with a second gen swap, mm -hmm. and a really broad torque curve, something that's electric yep. at seven fifty. Yep. And you know, when you put somebody in, you know, do the Pepsi challenge or whatever in two different trucks and you don't tell them what's in it. Yeah, they're gonna pick that one that's got the broad torque curve that comes on fast and right. you know you can right. break the tires loose just right. Absolutely, absolutely. But that one does it does really well on stock fuel, and we've got some trucks running up 200, 250 percent, 300 percent injector on that charger. But right. The thing that saves it's a wastegate because we're limited. We can only run certain shaft size yep. in that turbo. So keeping the boost in check. In, in in check is is key to not letting it. It's, it's not so much Survive. a boost, it's, it's turbo speed. Mm. And that wastegate keeps it from overspeeding. Gotcha. And one of those things that kills turbos is, is boost leaks. I mean, um, if you've got a leaking intercooler, a bad connection at a boot, um, those kind of things wipe out a turbo in a hurry. And we've done it long enough that we can you pretty much seen, spot you've yeah, seen. So an overspeed problem. In addition to all of the Cheetah stuff we just went over, uh, this is not very complete, but you guys That's an S4, yeah. So you guys do offer with all your second gen swaps as well. Mm -hmm. yep. um, all of all of uh, S four hundred line as well. The same uh, very similar aerodynamic uh, aerodynamics that we run in our cheetahs. We've grown up to sixty three, sixty eights um, and larger um, for the S four hundred line. And uh, they work really well in the S four hundred swaps and you know for the guy that knows that hey I'm I've had a truck before that was 500 horse or 600 horse yep. and they've got a new truck and they just want to skip that intermediate 700 horse step and know yep. that I want to be 8 
Yeah. You want to live at seven to eight fifty or something yes, like that. Exactly. You know, you, you don't want to peak at seven hundred. You want to kind yes. of live at they live don't at seven buy eight twice. Right. Yeah, so that's so. when you, you could go right to the second gen swap. Obviously, a little more money involved with that. A little different, you know, piping setup and everything else. Yeah. Not not anywhere near as drop in as that. But right. you know, this is you know going up in stages. You yep. know, your next level pretty much. Yep. And some people, I mean, we sell a lot of second gen swaps because everybody prefers the sound mm -hmm. of a second yep. gen. Yeah, absolutely. But, uh, but those are all S400 are all completed chargers. Tur completed turbos um, by part number. So you've got 463s, 467s, um, what do you have over here? 68s. Um, and then mostly uh, all cheetahs there that are, you know, the way we kind of set up, we're cramped for space. We're building a new building. But um, we took this space over like last year, I believe, and uh, filled it up within, you know, a month. Uh, but it's set up pretty well for what we're doing. He's awesome. boxing turbos up. Say hi, Jordan. <laughs> uh, boxing turbos up, pushing them through the pallet racking. They're getting pulled from the other side of the pallet racking. And all this inventory of turbos is available in, you know, I think about uh, 15 different warehouse distributor locations across North America and Canada. Um, as well as on fleeceperformance.com. Yep, this is kind of our display motor that uh, is an easy way to showcase our product. Um, this is a second gen swap kit. I think you've done uh, quite a bit of coverage on that. Um, it's a really good seller for us. Um, we just try to pay attention to detail on these kits and uh, we used to use a Cummins uh, turbo drain line and um, not everybody's setups are the same. Um, some people run different manifold manufacturers. So we make a line that pretty much can catch them all. Uh, we make a block adapter uh, back in the machine shop, which you'll see the machine shop. Uh, a little bit later, um, O-ring fittings on the uh, yeah the drain on the drains. Those gaskets are a pain, and uh, you know if we can make something better, we do. So it was one of my ideas. It's like, hey, put an O-ring in it. And yeah, that O-ring. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, heat shielding, uh, high temp silicon heat shielding on your feed lines. Nice A-N fittings. Um, Stuff's yeah, more top. expensive, but you don't have to run to the parts store to get stuff. No, nope. all in the box. It's all top notch. It all flows. It all looks good. Yeah, I mean, so we're. If, you're, if, if the rest of your engine isn't up to par, it'll be the best looking piece <laughs> yeah. piece in your engine. We'll set the precedent to the level of quality you want on the rest of your parts. But uh, real happy with Steed Speed manifolds. Um, they look good. They work well. Our intake with math bungs and our uh, our new uh, uh, elbows, intake elbows. With, with the, one of those things. With the fleece logo in yeah. them? Oh, that's nice. This Duramax has got our uh, 362. Uh, Fixed geometry turbo kit on it uh, has our stainless steel investment cast pedestal on it. Um, that's a really nice piece um, that gets unfortunately buried in the valley of a Duramax. You can never see it. Um, nice downpipe, fits well, no rubbing. Um, preset wastegate runs about 40 pounds, which is nice and safe uh, on a Duramax with no head studs. Um, got this one on an LML. Uh, I believe the part numbers are up for uh, LBZ and LMM as well. Okay. Uh, but we have our new Cheetah also, so you kind of have two options now for the LML. All right, guys, that is going to conclude our time uh, in Turbo Land. Uh, hopefully, you guys learned a little bit on uh, the different options and, and what's available for your truck. If you have any other questions or need any other information, go to fleeceperformance.com. Uh, check them out. Uh, if you guys want to order, saves yourself a couple bucks. Use Greg A for a discount. Save a little bit of money. Hope you guys enjoyed this. I'll see you guys soon. See you.